Okay, in this video, we're going to add and subtract rational expressions, okay? Um, you're gonna do this just like when you're adding and subtracting basic fractions. It's the same process as you're gonna go through. We need to find a common denominator first if they don't have one to begin with, okay? So basic example, if you add three-fourths and five-sevenths, you wanna get that least common denominator, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna multiply those two together. In this case, we multiply four times seven and we get 28, okay? So then you wanna convert each of these two fractions to an equivalent fraction with 28 in the denominator, okay? So 3 fourths becomes 21 over 28. We just multiply both numerator and denominator by seven to make that happen, because seven was the part of the denominator that was missing, okay? With five over sevenths, we convert it by multiplying by four over four, because the four was missing from the denominator as a factor. Okay, so five times four is 20, seven times four is 28. So now that we have a common denominator, we can add those fractions and we get 41 over 28, okay? So you guys have been doing that for a long time. This is nothing new, all right? Now, with rational expressions though, finding that common denominator can be a little more difficult, all right? So when we look at number one, number one's a lot like this example up here. Okay, so we wanna look at the denominators, x minus one and x plus two, okay? And we need each of those factors to be part of our common denominator. So our least common denominator is gonna be the, the product of these two binomials, x minus one and x plus two, okay? So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to convert each of these fractions into an equivalent fraction or rational expression containing both of these binomials in the denominator, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite what I started with, okay? With this left uh, part of the sum here, three over x minus one, what's missing is the x plus two. So I'm gonna multiply both top and bottom here times x plus two. That's gonna give me my least common denominator for this first rational expression, okay? What's missing from this denominator is that x minus one. So with that one, I'm gonna multiply both top and bottom by x minus one, okay? So in the numerator, I've got two different distributive property problems. So I'm going to do 3 times x plus 2, which gives me 3x plus 6. Notice I didn't multiply these two together. I left them as factors here. There's a, there's a reason we do that. Okay, so we're not going to do uh, by times by down here in the denominator. We're just going to leave those in factored form. Okay. Uh, on the right side, we've got a distributive property. x times x minus 1 gives me x squared minus x. Again, leave the LCD in factored form, okay? So we have common denominators. Now I can just add the numerators, okay? So 3x plus 6 plus x squared minus x. We're going to combine like terms. My numerator is going to be x squared. Then I've got 3x plus negative x, which is 2x. And then I've got my constant plus 6 over x plus 2, x minus 1, okay? This numerator can't be factored, so I've got my answer. So that's how you add those two rational expressions, okay? Let's look at number two. First thing I need to do in number two, this one can be factored. So in order to find my least common denominator, I wanna make sure everything is in factored form first, okay? So when I factor x squared minus one, remember that's difference of squares, that gives me x plus one times x minus one, all right? So now with my least common denominator, in this denominator, I've got one of these x plus one factors, and I've got one of these x minus one factors. In this denominator, I've got two different factors of x plus one, okay? So when I'm putting together my least common denominator, I need to make sure every one of these factors is present the maximum amount of times it occurs, okay? So x plus one occurs twice here, only once here, so I need it to occur twice in my least common denominator x minus 1 occurs one time here, no times here, so I need to make sure it occurs once in my common denominator, okay? Using the highest power that appears in any factor, all right? So this is my least common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the problem I started with. On the left-hand side, I'm missing one of the x plus 1s. I had one, but I need two. The x minus 1 is already accounted for, so on the left, I'm going to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. On the right side, I've got the x plus 1 squared, but I'm missing the x minus 1. So I need to multiply this rational expression by 
x minus 1 over x minus 1. Okay? Now, let's simplify this piece. We'll simplify this piece, and then we'll subtract the two fractions that now have a common denominator. All right, so x plus 1 times 1 is just x plus 1. Now that I've got my common denominator, that's going to be uh, in this form, just like we had here. Okay? There's an x plus 1 here, another one here. That gives me two of those x plus 1 factors, and then the x minus 1 factor occurs once. On the right side, we're going to have minus. Okay, I'm going to distribute here. I'm just going to leave that minus sign alone for now. I'm distributing 2 times x minus 1. So that gives me 2x minus 2 over my common denominator. All right? So now we have two fractions, two rational expressions. Uh, where we can combine like terms, all right? So we've got x minus 2x, so that gives me a negative x. Be careful with this sign here. It's 1 minus a negative 2, so 1 plus 2. So my numerator is going to be negative 1x plus 3 over my common denominator. I can't factor, so that's going to be my answer, okay? So when you're adding or subtracting rational expressions, you have to get a common denominator, just like you would when you add subtract any fractions. All right, you want to find the LCD by taking the highest power for every factor that appears. Okay, once you've done that, then we're going to do exactly what we would do when we were adding basic fractions. All right, um, we've got some practice problems down here. Try those, and we can work on those in class.